And what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is your friend, Sheep Lutes. Come with me on this journey as we unearth, you know, dig up from the grave an old series that I haven't really done too much this year. The top 10 cards under blank series. Now, today we're going to be counting down the top 10 cards under 100k MT that you can buy right now in NBA 2K23 My Team. I will say that, obviously, because this is a list focusing on cards from the marketplace, you're not going to see reward cards, but I will go through a group of reward cards that are very, very good. Some you might not even realize are as good as they are. Some you're probably already using at the end of this video after we get through the top 10. So, you know the drill. Five honorable mentions. Normally it's like four, but I decided five. I couldn't narrow it down this time. There was two cards that I'll go through in the honorable mentions that like I had trouble kicking one of them out. And then we get onto the top 10. So let's get started with a card that literally... I have never played online like I've pretty much faced majority of cards in this game at some point this Carmelo I have yet to run into online at all which is kind of crazy I ran into the diamond plenty now pink diamond Carmelo Anthony from the Zen set ranges depending on the time of day you look between about the lowest I've seen him go at least this week is like 57,000 uh, to the highest is like 70, right? Uh, obviously not including play, like batched up versions, obviously. But Carmelo has one of those jump shots that's very hit or miss for a lot of people. Like for myself, I am not great with it. Some of these faster releases, I'm just not, I'm not it with it. You know, if you were to have a whole team of Carmelos, like if I was to have somebody with Carmelo base on quick at every single position, or like a bunch of Carmelos and a bunch of Cincy Powells, basically. I could set my shot timing onto slightly late, and I think I would be fine. But mixing it up with other releases, besides the point. Melo is one of the better offensive small forwards in the game. And you'd be surprised, he plays competent enough defense. Like, trust me, he's going to get burned. Honestly, in certain aspects, though, I just really do feel like Silver Clamps is better than Hov Clamps sometimes. Melo is way better than you'd realize, and... I haven't seen really anyone run him. And I mean, at this point, when it comes to fast jump shots, people are going to be running guys like Terry, Cincy Powell, etc. So Melo kind of gets left behind as like an afterthought. But this card is still really, really good. Just don't be expecting him to be your defensive anchor. But other than that, very solid card. Another card that gets kind of like left behind when people think of very, very good budget cards is Jonathan Isaac. Jonathan Isaac is really, really, really good. You can get this card for lower than 10,000 majority of the time. He's really good. I mean, Jonathan Isaac's always good. Like, if you've played 2K for any number of years, like, you know that Jonathan Isaac is in kind of that elite group of people who, if he could just play about even 25% as well as his 2K cards play, like, he would literally be a Hall of Famer. These guys would include, like, Chris Stops. Uh, Channing Fry, <laughs> um, Jonathan Isaac, Isaac Bonga, like these are 2K legends for a reason. And I mean, realistically, like Jonathan Isaac does everything you'd really want him to do. He's huge. He has a pretty easy to time jump shot, though it is kind of slow. Um, he rebounds really well. He defends really well. There's really nothing he does badly. He's kind of Especially for this price point, I mean, one of the best small forward power forwards that you can buy. He plays power forward really well. He is a little bit skinny, but he holds it down. People sleep on this card, too. Shout out to Grussy for running Jonathan Isaac. That was super sick. Another slept-on card that I don't see anyone talk about is JoJo White. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I have never heard anyone positively talk about this card. And that's entirely possible. I mean, JoJo White, you can get for kind of a weird price point. He was going for 30k because all the bots were buying him up for a little while, but you can get him closer to like 20 now. JoJo White has Paul George release on normal, which doesn't sound good for a point guard, but it's surprisingly easy to green and it feels smooth. He's got the cam reddish upper too. Really solid release. Now, here's the one issue with JoJo White is he has pro dribble style. So, depending on how you use your point guard, he may not be the right point guard for you, which is why a lot of people don't talk about the card in general. Um, he also is unable to get limitless. So you may be thinking to yourself, why is he on this list if he has two glaring flaws? Well, the reason is 
very, very money jump shot, right? If you run your offense through like a shooting guard, let's say you get Zach Levine level 40 and you throw Jojo White next to him. That's kind of what I'm talking about, something of that nature. Um, the other reason is because rim running on current gen is so unstoppable and he has pretty much every rim running badge that you'd want. And as far as the point guard position on current gen, you're really not going to find guys that are this cheap that can do what Jojo White does. I mean, he's got Hoff Dimer, Hoff Floor General Hands for Days, Quick First Step, Unpluckable, Hoff Clamps. He's got good tendencies as well. He can play really well in an off-ball defensive setting. I'm not saying Jojo White is the greatest card in the world. What I am saying, though, is if you've exhausted all options at point guard and you want to try something new, pick up Jojo White, man. You might be surprised. You might actually like him quite a bit. Next up. Yeah, I know this one's not going to be popular, but Grant Hill. Grant Hill is about the most mid uh, shooting guard small forward to exist. Like, the jump shot is pretty easy to green, kind of slow, though. He does, like, everything pretty well, but nothing exceptional. But Grant Hill is really solid. You can get him for free from the Ascension. If you don't, he is roughly about 25k, possibly even lower. You can find some badged up, shoot up versions for right around that price point as well. Grant Hill is just exceptionally mediocre you know which kind of is how i would describe him in real life too to be honest i i would i would say i'm not a grant hill stan okay i was a you know known duke hater growing up he's just altogether pretty solid at everything like there's nothing he does badly there's nothing he does well if you're looking for like an all-around kind of uh shooting guard or small forward grant hill's really solid for that and final honorable mention before we get onto the top 10 Kristaps porzingis it's Kristaps. Like, it, it's Kristaps. I mean, this is all I gotta say. We're down bad as far as budget centers in this game, and the fact that Kristaps is still making these lists, like, this long after count... Oh. I don't like his jump shot, personally, but some people are money with it. Most people, if you haven't tried Kristaps yet, you, you probably shouldn't at this point, but 25k is still really good. Number 10, we're on to the actual top 10 now. Lonzo Ball. You know how I was just saying that the center position is down horrendous? The point guard position is down absolutely horrendous. Lonzo Ball is one of the best defensive point guards in the game. If you can get used to his jump shot, which a lot of people do. A lot of people like his jumper. You can thrive with Lonzo. He's got a great combination of size, rim running ability, playmaking ability, you know, and defense, obviously. He's just a way, way, way better Jason Kidd, basically, is what you're going to get from Lonzo Ball in this game. Now, like I said, his jump shot isn't great. I personally don't mind it. It is a little on the slower side, but it, I don't think it's as horrible as people say. Now, that being said, for 60000 he's probably the best all-around point guard that you can buy. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. He's the best defensive point guard you can buy. There's another point guard who I think is the best all-around point guard by kind of a significant margin but Lonzo Ball is kind of slept on he might be better for your team than you realize next up number nine another card that I, I think you may be surprised to see and that's Richie Guerin this card moves man Richie Guerin moves like you would be shocked I was shocked okay so like I see Richie Guerin and I pulled a bunch of them and I didn't really think much of it because I play on current gen and on current gen He's not really all that. Like, he's okay. 6'4", but he looks bigger. 6'5", wingspan. But on next gen, this man's movement is insane. Like, which makes no sense because he has base motion style and, like, Trey Young dribble style, which a lot of cards have at this point. But I don't know. Something about the way Richie Guerin moves is just different. Like, I don't know. The Evan Fournier release, really solid on normal. Um, he's just an altogether really solid card. He does everything kind of well. You're, this, he's not going to blow you away, okay? You're not going to pick up Richie Guerin and you're not going to be like, oh my god, this is the best card of all time. But you're going to pick up Richie Guerin and be like, wow, this is a really, really good offensive shooting guard. Like, what I was saying with JoJo White, if you have someone that you can kind of handle the ball with at the shooting guard, JoJo White is a fine point guard to have. Someone like Richie Guerin is what I was referring to. He's like 20k. Um, he's really altogether solid. By the way, just to specify, this isn't like a direct ranking for this top 10. It's not like I'm directly saying the number one card is better than the number nine card, okay? Like, Richie Guerin isn't directly better than Lonzo Ball. I'm just, it's just a top 10 list, okay? Pump the brakes. That's all I'm saying. 
Number eight. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm going to be completely transparent on this one. The only reason Evan Mobley is up this high is just because of how bad the power forward center position is. Evan Mobley, his jump shot is on slow, but it's not as slow as you would think. He plays fantastic defense, though. Like He's a little bit skinny, yes, but he's got that Hoff anchor, clamps, menace, post-lockdown, rebound chaser. He's going to be able to be a very, very solid 3 and D big. Now, whether you need him to play center or power forward, I personally think he's a little bit better on the power forward side of things, but it doesn't really matter regardless. Evan Mobley is better than you would expect. Like he is. The 60 ball handle, I would say, is kind of like his main detriment. But the defense is clean. The jump shot is easy to time, although obviously a little bit slow. Player model looks a little bit smaller, but he can still hold it down. Evan Mobley's good, though. You should give him a try. Number seven. I mean, this card's like three months old at this point, but it doesn't even matter. Ricky Davis is Ricky Davis. You know what I mean? Ricky Davis is going to spiral down in price due to the fact that he's the clutch time offline reward, so a lot of people are going to be getting him. Um, that being said, I mean, he's still such a good card. He is. This doesn't indicate that that's a good reward that should have been put onto clutch time offline, by the way. I would like to specify that, but more an indication that they haven't been giving out cards as regularly as they should. That being said, he's still got meta sigs. He's still really good. He still moves. That Seth Curry base is still really nice on quick with the Oscar upper. So Ricky Davis can still go. He's about 70k, which I think is a little bit high for him at this point, but still. Number six, newer card, Andre Iguodala. Iguodala goes hard like I mean if anybody used the diamond card at the beginning like you know Andre Iguodala is extremely good now I've heard conflicting reports on his jump shot some people say it got updated and it's now on quick other people say it's still on normal regardless I think it's a really good jumper and I don't think there's probably much of a difference anyway um, you can get Andre Iguodala for about 40k um, on the high end you're going to be paying about 50 which I still think is probably worthwhile for Andre Iguodala but 6'6", six, six. he looks a wee bit bigger than that. He plays fantastic defense. Nothing wrong with the card. Nothing. The only issue is that he's not able to get Limitless, which is an issue for sure. Um, but at the same time, I mean, if you're looking for a lockdown defending two guard, like, it's not the worst thing in the world, realistically. Like, plus, his jump shot is really easy to green, and you can green from far away. Andre Goodall is good. You might want to give him a try, honestly. Next up, number five, this is my boy right here. You shouldn't even be surprised to see the homie Bailey Howell out here. That DeRozan base, fantastic. That was the weakest kissing noise I've ever done. God, thank God I'm not Italian. I would have get disowned for that. Bailey Howell is fire. Look at this man. This is peak athlete physique right here. Look at this guy. Oh my God, he's so good. I'm sorry. Bailey Howell is so good. Like, I like this card a lot, if you guys couldn't tell. I personally think he's the best small forward out of the Pink Diamonds and Flash forward. He might be the best Pink Diamond small forward period in this game, besides Tim Thomas at this point. I like Bailey Howell a lot. He does everything well. If you don't already have Bailey Howell, go pick up Bailey Howell. He is the man. That DeRozan base is so smooth. I ranked him as five because I think the guys ahead of him are either better in their position or quote-unquote more meta but honestly for me bailey howell is number two on this list as far as like productivity number four newer card as well serge Ibaka. you can get serge Ibaka for dirt cheap like under 10k and he's so good his jump shot is really nice 610 he is he really does everything evan mobley does except he can't really play center as well as evan mobley can but if you run those two gangly men next to each other you're gonna have a really skinny front court but a really efficient front court he blocks shots he is an excellent shooter he plays fantastic defense i mean it's serge Ibaka. like you know what you're getting at this point from serge he's not handling the rock he is strictly a three and d big man but he is an extremely good three and d big man he's worth a try next up would be my starting small forward only because i'm a bulls fan Luol Deng. Now, there has been some Luol Deng slander afoot recently, and I understand why he's not as great as everyone, you know, kind of preached him to be initially when he came out. He's definitely not worth 200 k I will stand firm on that. 
But at the same time, he's a six foot nine small forward that plays lockdown defense, has a Donovan Mitchell release, which I think is really, really good. Uh, people say it sucks on current gen. I don't necessarily believe that. I have been using Luol Dang, and I like him a lot. Like, it's not as good as Bailey Howell's release, I will say, but very easy to green. He moves incredibly well. There's just nothing wrong with this card. Like, he moves better on next gen than he does on current gen, but on current gen, even if you're using him as a. Like, let's say you pick up Lil Dang and you're using him as a 3 and D wing. For, you know, 25k, I mean, he's the same price as Bailey Howell, and I'd be wagering that Lil Dang is a better 3 and D wing than Bailey Howell, personally. And that's Bailey. I love Bailey Howell. I would still say Lil Dang might be slightly better at that role than him. So, even if you're picking him up for just 3 and D wing things, which people will say is like a waste when it comes to cards like these he's still so good i think he's more than deserving of the number three spot next up number two now i will be completely honest with you guys about this i do not like this card okay hear me out the card's really good i understand that great tendencies great badge count good player build i cannot consistently time this luca base on very quick to save my life I am not kidding. I cannot. There'll be games. I think that's what frustrates me the most is there will be games where I will go just absolutely X games mode with Cincinnati's Powell. Like this release, I will not miss shots. And I mean, dude, realistically, if you look at the actual stats of Cincinnati's Powell, this man is damn near an invincible card. Like outside of like a 75 standing dunk, he's 85 plus in everything. He's so good. It's just the jump shot for me. Like, I cannot consistently time the Luka release on very quick. But if you can, Cincinnati's Powell might be the most elite small forward in the entire game. I'm not kidding when I say that. Like, that Chris Paul dribble style with the elite motion style, oof, he moves. He's got Damus behind the back, my favorite behind the back in the game. That John Wall escape people love. Cincinnati's Powell is the man. But I have him at number two because I think his release is a little suspect. Now, if you lab the game super hard and you get used to that release and you get it cracking and you can green it consistently, yeah, he's going to be a demon and easily number one on this list. But I just can't, man. I tried. I tried. It's just I feel like every single game I use that release, the timing's different. I really do. Number one, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Now, Shea Gildas Alexander, I feel is, and I'm going to say this in the nicest possible way, it, he's trash proof. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how bad you suck at this game. You can score with Shea Gildas Alexander because he's six foot six and has every finishing badge in the game. And this is 2K23. And you can just hold turbo and press X. That's all you have to do. Literally. Shea Gildas Alexander, hold turbo, attack rim, he's probably going to score a vast majority of the time he's good the release is fire as well i like it a lot but it's also a release that i'm inconsistent with as well like bailey howell very consistent with that release um honestly even luel dang very consistent serge Ibaka, very consistent shea gildas alexander and cincinnati powell cincinnati cincinnati is can't hit it consistently like there'll be games where i'm on fire there'll be games where i'm breaking it's just you know but Shea Gildas Alexander, I'm way more consistent with than Cincy Powell. I just feel like it does happen sometimes. I'm trying to give you any type of copyouts with the cards. But Shea Gildas Alexander is just the man. And honestly, probably the best point guard that you can buy for under 100k. I don't think it's particularly close. I would be willing to say, based on position, he's probably the best overall card that you can buy for under 100k. Because the point guard position is so bad. Now, I talked about cards that obviously would be making top squads that are reward cards uh, also let me know what you think down in the comments below the list is there anyone that i missed out on i'm pretty sure i got them all but larry nance is my bench power forward and honestly should be starting but i'm just like forcing myself to use sean kemp because i grinded for him larry nance is so good get larry nance that jump shot is fantastic it's a little bit slow but very easy to time he does everything well he wears high socks there's nothing wrong with this card wang zz wang zz i think i don't know how to say it i just say wang big wang has a stroke big wang fire jump shot super good also he's massive i mean it's wang we all used wang last year 
So you you know what's going on. He's even better this year because he's a combination of size and girth. Wang is number one, man. No question. Number one Wang fan over here. Please clip that out of context. Um, other than that, I mean, if you look at the cards from the Happy Holidays last season, I mean, like, Jaron Jackson Jr. is probably still one of the best budget big men in the game. Like, he really is. Like, if you run Wang in the starting center spot and then Jaron Jackson Jr. off the bench, you're going to be sitting just fine. Uh, Bradley Beal is still really good for reasons I'm still not 100% sure of. Bradley Beal is still one of the most unstoppable cards at rim running. I don't really know what that's all about. His stats and badges are surpassed by other cards, but for some reason, Bradley Beal is just that guy. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, if you're ever in need of steals about John Stockton, CPU controlled John Stockton will get like 10 steals a game in a domination game, by the way. Uh, Glenn Rice is actually pretty slept on as well. He has incredible defensive tendencies. Um, and if you set your defensive settings right, like Glenn Rice can hold down your opposing player with the utmost ease. Like that 95 shot contest, he can test everything. Like, and he blocks a lot of it too. That 84 foul tendency may get you in trouble though. But anyways, um, just one more honorable mention too. I know people are going to be mad about this one that I didn't include this card, but just know I have my reasons, um, would probably be Kevin Porter Jr. He's just not a very good defender. Um, but he's also one of the better point guards that you can buy for like 2000 MT. He'll obviously be featured prominently on the best cards under 20 K or 10 K. However, I decide to do that. So just just know that kevin porter jr guy if you're still watching man you know it is what it is but hey thank you for watching the video like i said comment down below with any other people that you thought you know probably should have made the list that aren't kevin porter jr and uh look i'll be back with more content tomorrow hopefully we get some good leaks tomorrow man i can't handle another flight school pack but have a good night you guys peace